What's up guys, it's me, LSB Spectra here in another video in Wayward Terran Frontier. Surprise, we get another tutorial. I decided to keep doing tutorials, but just at my own pace whenever I feel like doing them. But this time I want to teach you how to upgrade your current ships. Now, I've shown you how to do ships outside in the outside editor, um, but that's not it's not as useful. And I and uh, some people in the chat um, asked me to do this as a suggestion. Now, I want to do this ship because this ship is one of my favorite ships, but it also has some very serious power issues. And so I figured it would be a good ship to start off with to optimize. Now, if you guys enjoy this, we can try to do this for other ships that you like or want. And I will go through and, and do my best to optimize them to make them work better. Now, I'm going to select this. Before I select this design, I'm trying to do this without... I always hit escape. Without you requiring you to have a whole bunch of components researched. So if I go into the research tab, you start off with all of these. Now... You can't delete or add anything to a ship unless you have it researched. So if you want to delete this capacitor, you have to have it researched. If you want to delete this heatsink, you have to have it researched. Now for this particular ship, I you need to. I'm I'm going to have this capacitor heatsink uh, researched. Now the only reason I feel okay about doing that is because you do start out with it. Uh, maybe in the future we'll get to the point where. We will just say, well, you have to have this researched in order to do this upgrade if you guys enjoy this and want me to do that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have those two things researched. So now let's go in, back to our ship. I selected a power. You just type in your name, clone design, but I'm going to edit this design. Now this is how the ship is. Um, we're going to put on power overlay so you can kind of just at a glance see where all the power is going without having to concentrate too hard. Now we mostly... We have thrusters, your engines, turrets, sensors, and a uh, drone, a repair drone, that's what it's called. Um, and that's about it. You have your life support, obviously. Um, now, the problem is, so let's, let's first talk about this, something. So you got your, to begin uh, with this, you need to understand what kind of energy you have. So we have this reactor, now we don't actually have it in here, so what we have to do is we have to go back out after we figure out what kind of engine we have, we have to go to the out of campaign ship editor and look at the the function the functionality of the reactor. Now to determine the actual functionality of the reactor takes a it takes a little bit of uh took a little bit of research for me to get it like where I fully understand it and I and I did, I did that for you guys. And so now we're going to shoot to a little clip where I explain um, how to calculate uh, optimal output of everything. So let's go ahead and cut to that real quick. Okay, so I took a screenshot of the editor area where it shows all the parts and you can make your own designs. Um, not in the campaign, outside the campaign. You know what I'm talking about. Anyways, this is the reactor. Um, I took a screenshot so that we could zoom in and see this a little bit uh, better. It'll be a little fuzzy, but at least we can see the numbers a little bit bigger. In fact, let's make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, so what happens is there is a amount of energy that the reactor can produce, but in order to produce that, some of it has to be burned off as heat waste because of the way the reactors work. And this does a lot of the calculations for you, and I've done th gone through and done the calculations myself to prove this theory, uh, which is no longer a theory. I think it's fact. So it gives you an optimal output. Now, before any heat is wasted, it can put out 58.6 uh, units of energy per second. I'm just going to say energy per second. Um, but after, but um, to optimally do it, to, at optimal, I guess you could say levels, it can produce 39 uh, energy per second. Now you come down here and it tells you how much we, how much waste. Uh, is how much percentage of the energy turns into waste. It gives you an optimal heat production, max heat production, thermal capacity, and cutoff points. We'll talk about all these. So for optimal output at 39 energy per second, you you start producing your optimal heat production of 8.97 heat per second. So at any point, if you're taking out 39 energy per second, you're producing 8.9 heat. Now, 
if you if you go up to its max output, which is pre-waste production, which is 58.6 energy per second, you'll be creating a whopping 17.9 and uh, heat per second heat per second. Now, if you go through and do the calculations, you go, wait a second, that's wrong. However, if you come up into the description, it says um, they always have an optimal uh, running output. Any energy that is used beyond the op optimal output experiences a double heat penalty. So if you plan to place a heavy load on your reactors, it is a good idea to have extra radiators. So normally this would be I want to say roughly 13 or or 12, somewhere around there. I can't remember. I did the calculation. I should have written it down. But because of the double penalty, it turns into 17.9 heat per second. So that's why that number is the way it is, in case you're curious. But luckily, this does all the calculations for you, so you don't have to go through and do that. All you have to do is look at pre-waste production, which is max energy that the thing that the reactor can produce, Max heat production is therefore how much heat you'll be using if you get to that point because of the heat penalty. Um, but optimal and optimal output and heat is where you want to try to stay to be the most efficient. Now you go down to thermal capacity. Thermal capacity is how much heat the reactor can take before it explodes. Thermal cutoff is the point in which the reactor will shut down and no longer operate if it reaches that heat point. So as soon as 80 uh, heat units is stored up inside the reactor and uh, not being burned off by a radiator it will shut off and that's why you get your reactor to shut off uh, shut down and that's and they have this so it doesn't explode if it reaches 100 um, which is why I think it explodes when um, it's shot because it hits that thermal capacity anyways um, so that's how that works uh, you need to you need to keep it within these optimal uh, ranges and um, keep heat from building up into its own uh, heat bank that it has. Okay, so obviously we want to keep everything in the optimal output of 39 uh, energy per second as I stated. Now, the other thing is that the conduits have a max bandwidth of 60 energy per second. Um, so what that means is that at any point, only 30 energy can be running through these uh, conduits, the wires essentially, we'll put back on the power overlay. All the yellow wires, only 30 energy can be running. So let's say from this wire right here, if this thing is requiring 20 and this thing is requiring 20, they don't, but let's just say they do, it could not squeeze out the 40 it needed. It just couldn't. It would be impossible. It can only send out 30 and it would have to choose which one to go to first. And that's every tick. And every tick is like every second. So it's 30 energy per second can be running through it. So what we need to do is we need to set this up to where it can optimally reach everything and not clog up bandwidth. Now another thing is both of these reactors are kind of powering everything, which is very sloppy design in my opinion. So Let's let's say this this needs power, this sensor, and then this engine needs power. Now, at any moment, this reactor could decide to try to power this sensor, and it could be running through some shared line. Here, let's let's pick a better let's pick a better example. Okay, so let's say this reactor decides to power this drone. This uh the drone, uh, repair drone, I keep wanting to say drone ship, but it wants to, it decides, it wants to travel all the way up through here, and so it now clogging up this entire bandwidth, let's say. Now, this reactor decides, hey, this thing all the way down here, yeah, this thing all the way down here needs power, but I want to go through this wire, which would take me all the way through here to power this. See, now they're conflicting, and they can't, they can't get past each other. Even if this only required 20 and this only required like 15, they wouldn't, that's 35 and 35 can't be running through this. Something's not going to get as much power as it needs. And so what we need to do is we need to split that up. And so what I want to do is I want to split up this reactor and this reactor into halves. And I want to split them by important halves. So I think this reactor is going to take care of all the engines and all the bottom thrusters and a turret. 
This reactor is going to take care of the repair drone, a turret, the sensors, and all of these. And that's kind of how we're going to split it up. Now, splitting it up, so I went back and I, and I looked at all of the power usage of everything. So this big sucker takes 9.8 energy. These take 5.8. These little uh, thrusters take 1.28. Um, and if you add them all together, it roughly comes up to about 26.68 energy per second. Um, now, I don't know how... It, it's never stated how much uh, these take up. But I think that's a... A safe, a safe enough margin between 26 and 39 that we should be okay. Um, I'll also split up... I'll find a way to split up these life support. They don't take much. Now, these sensors each take 0.5. And then we have, we have the thrusters again. But then we have this. Now, like the turrets, this is not stated how much energy it takes. But in the past... It has been stated that it takes about 20 energy per second. It no longer says that, so it could be totally wrong. But let's be honest. Every time you use the repair drone on the ship, it seems to consume all the energy. So I'm going to say it's roughly 20, if not 25. So without this or the turret, this section comes up to 4.8 energy per second if everything's being used. So you add 20 on there, you're about, you're about 24, and that leaves you another 10 energy per second to be if this is different and with the turret. So I think that's a pretty safe even split with what we're doing. So let's go ahead and get to splitting this. We have this. So what we need, what we need to do is we're gonna get rid of this. Get rid of this dumb line that's happening. We can't get rid of all those skips, which is fine. This is coming down here, which we do no longer want. We'll split up that. This guy is coming over to here, powering all that. That's good. He's coming out to here, powering this. That's good. Now I want to get rid. This is just a mess to me. This little power bank thing. We'll add power bank in another way, but we don't need it like that. So we'll get rid of that. And while radiators don't actually use a power or inhibit the... Uh, oh, what's it called? The um, the capacity essentially of the conduits. Um, I am going to split it up that way; they're not connected, and we'll have to deal with heat sinks again here in a minute. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect them from each other. Um, is there actually one in there? Okay. So everything's split up pretty happily. We are going to disconnect that and connect it into this one. So this one's powering this one. Um, and this one. So that way they're each powering two. Things look a little sloppy, but that's okay. So I think everything is pretty well split up. Now we just need to make sure everything's connected properly. Now, capacitors you have to be careful with because as soon as they're, they can be a good buffer. So what the, what will happen is the system will take energy out of a capacitor before it takes it out of the reactor. The problem is as soon as the reactor starts lose, as soon as the capacitor starts losing energy, the reactor will start to fill it up. But for the most part, the reactor will prioritize other components before a capacitor so you have to be kind of careful how much capacity you put into the system um, and this doesn't seem like a bad amount so what we're going to do is we're going to take this up to this little corner totally messed that up there we go close enough so this is powering this it's not clogged powering these two because those two combined make up about 14 energy per second. Let's come down and power these. Okay, that seems pretty good. I like that. Um, and only three capacitors. I'm okay with that. 
so we're gonna stick with that. So this bottom half is done. Now for this top half, this guy gets his own conduit into there. Good. Um. Yeah, so we're gonna leave that alone. This comes into here, this crosses, and needs to power all of this with one conduit line, which I'm not upset about. Because this guy could potentially power this and help power things up here. Yeah, I don't think I'm upset about how this is all wired. <clears throat> Another problem we now have to think about is that the fact that these little heat sinks only dissipate 0.8 heat per second, and we need to cover about nine heat per second. Um, which means we need, oh call, roughly 10 to 11 heat sinks per reactor. Now we got one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So to give you an idea, only 12 heat sinks were covering both reactors before that's why it was overheating so badly so in retrospect you could leave it exactly the way it's wired and just add more heat sinks problem is is where to add them this ship has pretty good rotational speed and so I'm not too afraid let's get rid of the power overlay to add them back here for this reactor so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine uh ten eleven eleven real quick let me pull out my phone and pull up the calculator real quick. Let's just make sure, because I was just kind of doing mental math. 11 times 0.8 would equal 8.8 .8 energy per second, which is almost exactly how much we'll be producing. Almost. And we won't be at max usage the entire time. So we could try to add one more somewhere just to make everything happier. Um, let's go ahead and do that just right here. So that way we're at 12. So now let's turn on power overlay and connect all of these um, the best we can. And I also made it so that I can reach pretty much all of these. I say pretty much because obviously I can't reach the one I'm connecting right now or this one very well. But for the most part, I can repair all the heat sinks. I can't repair any of these. But, you know, take battle damage, that's what you get. Now, for this upper one, that's where it's going to get rough on adding heat sinks. It almost makes me want to. See, this is where getting better heat sinks would be, would make optimizing this ship way easier. Because the other ones radiate a lot more heat, so you wouldn't have to have so freaking many. So if you can find better heat sinks, do it and research them, because it will make your life a lot easier with this. Um, yeah, the problem is deciding where to put more. I can't... Add a lot more. Um, you know what we're going to do? We're going to add another one up here. Which means we're going to give that one another one. And then... We will give this one another one. And give this guy another one up here. Yeah. 
another one, and another one for them. Okay, let's go ahead and connect these up. So this is still at 12. And now, this guy is a little happier. So now this guy is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We just need three more for up here. Let's see if we can sneak some in somewhere. Um, we can sneak one right there. There's one. <laughs> this is the hard part because you, you got to decide your fighting style and where you're letting them hit your ship the most. I usually let them hit this side of my ship the most. So I'm okay with that. The only thing I get nervous about is my cargo bay, but we'll reinforce this a little bit more. But you also have a repair drone. So, you know, <laughs> can't get uh, too upset about uh, not being able to having less armor or armored places because you can just repair yourself so easily um, we're gonna give this one another one so that means we only have to place one more uh, I guess we might as well there we go Okay, so now we have the right amount of heat sinks for everything, which is awesome. And that's just for optimal output. Now, if we start going over for some reason, then we're in trouble, but that's okay. Um, now, it's extremely tempting to connect the two systems somewhere so they can help each other out. But again, I don't want to run to that fact of the example down here of them interfering with each other. So I think we're going to leave it at that. Now let's take this and add some armor because you always have uh, armor researched. Add a little bit more around here. Just because this is the part of the ship I'm now going to focus as much as I possibly can to have them aim at. You know, making sure to keep an eye on my integrity and inertia. Um, yeah, we definitely want to... Now, one thing I like to do when I do do this is I like to reinforce right behind the, ra the radiators uh, or heat sinks because if they do get shot, it then starts to run into armor and makes that area a little less vulnerable of them just being able to shoot straight into everything, if you know what I mean. So I like to add a little bit around and behind things. Um the best I can. You know, obviously sometimes I can't, like right there. Uh, but sometimes I can. So... Just to make it, you know, that much better. So we're getting our integrity low. Let's see if we... We don't have any structure. So we can't add any structure. So we probably should stop there. Um, just to give myself a little bit of integrity back. I'm going to take a little bit off of there. Yeah, it looks a little happy. I'll take this little row I added off so that we're back at the 200,000s. And I think that's pretty good. Now, let's see if we can't... Let's go ahead and hit save. Let's exit. Spawn a ship. Power. Select. Let's go get inside of it and see if we can't get ourselves into a... Oh, gosh dang it. Guess what I have to do? I have to go uh, add guns to the ship because I'm an idiot and forgot to do that. Gall. Sometimes I'm just really dumb. Stock repair. Here we go. Now we can get in the ship. Oh, jeez. Okay, so here's a guy I can I can fight. Let's go ahead and scan him. Now again, the limiting factor here is the fact that we don't have really good heat sinks. So there's still a chance that I 
will overheat. Let's go ahead and uh, make things work a little bit. Let's take some damage so that we can send out our repair drone. Come on, dude, shoot me. Come on, shoot. We'll go ahead and just use our turrets not shooting at him, let him get some damage on us. Please. Using our th side thrusters, our engines. Now the nice thing about it is that we split it up, but really the engines aren't used a ton so that battery reactor will always be, should always be okay to keep going. So you see that we have two reactors in the semi, semi red, which means they are being used. Let's send out, yeah, a repair drone. Let's see if we can't get him hurt in some way. Come on. Damage me, buddy. Guess I should have found somebody better. So we haven't seen an overheat yet, which is good. It's bouncing around like it wants to overheat a little bit. But again, that's... I would say that's only because of the heat sinks. I wouldn't say it's any other reason. So let's bring back our repair drone. See, that bumps it up to where the reactor is being used, but it's not maxed, re or that means only one reactor is actually maxing out or overheating, which means, you know, this, this guy's probably a little overused. Let's bring him back. Have to regain more power in him. See, he's really not that bad. We seem to be doing okay you know considering everything see by now we would have definitely overheated yeah we definitely would have overheated so looking at our ship this drone repair drone seems to take up a little more power than maybe I would have thought because this is overheating but you can tell if you go let's go back over to the cockpit if you read this, which is our information, press F1, it'll tell you a little bit about it. But because it's only going halfway, that means only one of the reactors was actually overheating. You can see the number of reactors, two. Um, so if it was all the way to the left, that means two reactors would have been uh, overheated. And it wasn't at that point, it was only once. That means our bottom reactor, which is essentially in charge of some really important components, <laughs> our getting away mechanism and a turret, was not overheating. It was not in the risk of overheating in any way, it seemed like. So, thumbs up on that. This one is no longer overheating. This one still is, but to be honest, is very minimal. Um, it's not... Whereas before, it would it seemed like both reactors were overheating to just try to get the drone bay to, you know, refill with energy. And it's causing everything to shut down constantly. Now, obviously, this isn't, like, fully battle-tested. I went against a pretty minor opponent. Um, but, you know what? Let's see here. There was... There was somebody else also close by that we could go um, poke at, if I remember. Over here somewhere that I saw for a minute. I thought... See, those are all small ships down there. Let's go tease. Let's go tease this big guy. Maybe he's... Oh, this guy's got a partner. These two should be able to uh, hurt me pretty bad. I would, I would hope. Come here, you. Okay, apparently I need to boost to get up to him again. Watch this be a ship I actually want to capture, and I'll, I'll start suddenly take this fight seriously instead of letting him attack me. Hey, you. Oh, you're a trade ship. You're not going to attack me, are you? <laughs> Crud. Well, we picked the one ship that would. So, in the meantime, with you not being able to take care of things, now that that guy's disabled... So with this current setup, the only thing I might change now is put this um, heat, this uh, life support maybe on this reactor to take a little bit of load off of this in case things get bad. Because it'll get to a point where these life supports are going to be working 
full time and they'll be taking power. And obviously this one needs to all the power it can get to fill this. So I would probably move this onto here so that you had all th the three of them working on that reactor since that one has less of a load it appears. Um, but other than that I think we did a pretty darn good job of turning this ship from a a fairly good you know hunting ship slash uh, raiding ship and all of that man I really can't drive today um, into something that I think would be a lot more formidable against larger ships now that it, it doesn't essentially kill itself I mean let's you know start using as much energy as possible on that uh, second reactor or that top reactor I should say ooh something exploded see right now we're letting him hit my heat sinks and even though they are hitting the heat sinks you see now we've got two reactors um, going let's go see look at the damage see heat sinks are damaged now reactors are overheating see that's a problem and that's why you can't give them that side too much but really I'm not sure there's much you can do the only other thing I could see you doing to improve that scenario is spread out all the heat sinks so that they're going all they're like spread out all the way across the pier instead of bunched up so if you feel that will work better for you go ahead and try that so instead of having them bunched up right here have like two right here 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 and kind of spread them all across the side so that way they're not damaging all of them at once um, other than that I I would consider this a success um, so hopefully you enjoyed that if you did um, and would like to see me do other ships uh, please let me know in the comments below uh, what ship you would want to see me do and if you want to see me research more components to do um, the uh, improvements with a little more depth because you can't modify too much I mean if we had more components we could like actually like remove beds and add stuff um, but anyways let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video see ya